Welcome to an insightful edition of our Leadership Dialogues, where we spotlight visionaries who are shaping the future of healthcare through groundbreaking innovations. Today, it is my privilege to welcome a global leader who stands at the forefront of transforming orthopedic care with cutting-edge robotic technology. Joining me today is Janardhan Ramachandran. He is the worldwide president of Vellis Digital Surgery and Strategic Capabilities at Johnson & Johnson MedTech. Known widely as JR, he is responsible for driving global innovation in robotics, digital surgery, enabling technologies and software solutions. In this conversation today, we'll explore global trends that are shaping MedTech delve deeper into India's pivotal role as a medical innovation hub and unpack how J&J's Vellis Robotic Assisted Solution, that's VRAS, has rapidly emerged as the leader in robotic assisted knee replacements in India, enhancing patient outcomes and setting new benchmarks in personalized surgical care. JR, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We appreciate your time. And where are you joining us from? Um, yeah, so I uh, live with my family um, in a place called Westchester, Pennsylvania, which is very close to Philadelphia. Um, and we've been there for about six years. So it's interesting. You have a global role. And from this vantage point, what are some of the most significant trends that you see are currently reshaping the medtech industry, particularly in digital and robotic surgery? And how do you see India's role evolving in the global landscape? It's a great question. Um, I mean, I'll take a step back. And, you know, when you think about the, the sheer burden of musculoskeletal disease in the world, um, we estimate 1.7 billion people suffer from some form of orthopedic uh, you know, disorder, let's say uh, trauma, osteoarthritis, back pain. And unfortunately, the incidence of uh, you know, debilitating diseases like osteoarthritis in India is relatively higher as compared to the rest of the world. So there is a huge unmet need um, you know, for the Indian patient population for, for us to drive more innovation. Uh, in terms of just trends, I would say um, that there are a few things that are emerging within uh, orthopedics that, that are reshaping the category. Uh, one of them would be the emergence of technology, the increased penetration of robotics, and uh, just the ability to hyper-personalize um, you know, procedures and, and potentially outcomes for patients. Uh, we are also seeing uh, just innovation across the spectrum of not just um, robotic capital, but software solutions that enabled AI-driven planning, um, and, and just approaches to data, artificial intelligence, and just the integration of a digital uh, first approach to end-to-end -end patient care. Um, so it's an exciting time to be in orthopedics. And especially in a country like India, where you said there's so much unmet need, I think innovation can significantly cut down costs as well. Now, India has emerged as a major hub for medical treatments and innovations. How is J&J &J leveraging the ecosystem to drive innovation and adoption of advanced surgical technologies like robotics? I think India is, is a unique market, um, just given its, its size, as well as uh, you know, a, a demanding patient population that, that wants access to the best products. It's very value conscious. Um, some excellent, highly skilled surgeons, um, and and just the ability to get access to such a diverse population in terms of sort of the clinical demands, uh, as well as the sophistication of what we're dealing with. So it's a it's an ecosystem that's really ripe for delivering innovation, and and that's what we're seeing. And what's also very heartening to see is it's not limited to certain clusters of the population in, in large metros. What we are seeing is rapid adoption and demand for technology in tier two, tier three cities, um, and, and really across the cross section. So for us, I think at j, &J um, you know, we're looking to bring technologies that are at the intersection of uh, clinical viability, um, you know, e provide an economic benefit, right? drive economic value, 
and, and of course can be scaled seamlessly, right? And, uh, and India has been an incredible market for us with that regard. Well, technology is definitely permeated across cities and sections of society. Yeah. In fact, it's quickly becoming a leveler as well in India. You have extensive global experience across the US, Europe and Asia. How do you see the Indian orthopedic market compare with other key regions? And what unique opportunities do you think it offers for growth and innovation? I think um, you know you can you can divide sort of the global orthopedic market into uh, two cohorts, right? Uh, one is your your more mature, um, you know, Western markets, be it the U.S., Western Europe, uh, Australia, Japan would be would be some of those markets. These are large markets that that uh, have been around in terms of adoption of technology uh, and you know growth, right? But where we are really excited with respect to not just the market's growth and sophistication, but also uh, the hunger for technology and innovation and just a different approach to maybe leapfrogging a generation in terms of technology adoption, India is front and center. Um, and, and we are very uh, proud of the you know, portfolio that we brought to India. If you look at the Velus Robotic Assisted Solution for Total Knee Arthroplasty, which uh, is now also available for partial knee replacement, um, it is it is a fit for purpose technology, um, and what what it does is it combines a small footprint of robots with uh, a CT free technology. So um, you know CT uh, comes with its own challenges of cost, exposure to radiation, and a whole host of other things. Um, Velus Roboticus solution does not require a CT, and and it just delivers personalization and precision and the insights that surgeons are looking for. Um, that is just appropriate for the market. Can you also talk about the role digital surgery and robotic assisted solutions play in addressing the growing challenge of arthritis in India, particularly uh, when it comes to demographic most affected, that's the elderly and women? It is a debilitating disease burden. Um, and, and if you look at um, specifically within the Indian population, there's a number of factors that have contributed to the, to the increased incidence of osteoarthritis, um, right? Increased urbanization, um, changes in the lifestyle, um, and, uh, you know, just how the, um, you know, the rise of metabolic disease and inflammation all contribute to, you know, how arthritis uh, is, is a big unmet need in India. And if I think about, you know, our approach, if, if you look at our vision at orthopedics, it is very simple. It is to keep people moving. It is the reason for our being. And um, our goal is how can we bring um, the not just the technology or, or an implant to market, but it's the combination of the technology, the implant, and the technique that the surgeon adopts to ensure that the patients have the outcome that they're looking for. I think Indian patients are becoming increasingly more educated um, around what's possible. They, they just don't want a pain-free survival, they want to get their lives back. They, they want to go back to being active, playing sports, or you know, spend time with their grandchildren doing the things that they love. And robotic surgery, along with our portfolio, really is, is shaped to be able to do that. Giving longevity and quality of life. Yes. Now, what factors do you think have contributed to growth and success of Veles Robotic Assisted Solution in such a competitive market? Um, yeah, great question. I think we are very proud and pleased with uh, the performance of the Velus uh, platform over the last uh, four to five years that we've been in market. If you look at um, uh, Velus uh, Robotic Assisted Solution, we are now in 31 markets uh, and we've completed more than 100,000 procedures, so more wow. than a lakh procedures. Um, and that has made us one of the fastest growing platforms in the world. Um, and, and India really is, is a top three market for us, right? With respect to robotic penetration. And in terms of factors, I would say it's is its uniqueness. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it's a CT-free technology. It's a small footprint. It allows for um, you know personalization, precision, and delivers the kinds of intraoperative insights that surgeons are looking for. And surrounding it with an ecosystem of data products that then can become this virtual cycle of imp continuously improving learning from surgery and then manifesting that into how we do surgery in the future, how we plan for patients, how we think about personalization. Um, and so I think those factors have been really instrumental in our, in our success so far. Now, could you 
could you share some highlights on how personalized robotic solutions lead to better patient outcomes compared to other traditional methods? We're very pleased and we're very proud of um, what we've achieved uh, with the Velus Robotics solution that we've been in the market now for uh, four to five years, um, last two to three years in India. Um, and, and that's really driven by um, you know, so the scale we've achieved, uh, you know, just for context, we have, we're now more in more than 30 markets. We've completed more than one lakh procedures. Uh, and it's driven by a fit for purpose technology mm -hmm. that's meeting the needs of the market. It is a next generation robot that addresses critical unmet needs with respect to personalization, um, as well as delivering valuable intraoperative insights for surgeons mm -hmm. and just not just, you know, creating a plan, but executing it. It's very interesting indeed. And looking ahead, how will technologies like AI and ML further enhance the capabilities and precision of Velis? Could you also give us a sense of what's next on the roadmap? Sure. Um, AI, machine learning, um, it's a topic close to my heart. Um, I've been a data scientist for a long time, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a great time as, as a consumer of um, you know, AI, um, you know, just, just in the world, what's happening around us. If you think about the, the advancements in large language models, every week there's, there's a new development that renders everything else obsolete, right? Uh, I think within um, orthopedics, our approach, at least in the short term, is, is a responsible, actionable approach to artificial intelligence. So we are tackling uh, problems that, uh, you know, really enable surgeons to automate the things that they don't really want to worry about interoperatively. So if you think about annotation of um, anatomical landmarks when it comes to imaging in hip surgery, uh, when it comes to uh, you know, delivery of personalized plans for a given patient archetype, right? these are all things that we're collecting data on and we can teach algorithms to, to then predict for the next patient, right? So these are all uh, programs that we are working towards, but we're not losing sight of those moonshot goals that then will you know, come in the future um, that will transform outcomes and surgery. Now, what is j and sustained investment in digital surgery and robotics say about its long-term vision for India, especially beyond the metropolitan cities? I mentioned, right, our, our vision is to keep people moving and it's not just the investment in innovation. Innovation is the lifeblood of everything we do. Um, it's bringing the combination of technique, implant, technology as, as a full procedural solution for our customers. Um, but it doesn't stop there. We are committed to investing in uh, surgeon education and staff education for the safe and compliant use of our products. Uh, we invest in, in areas that are not visible externally. If, if you think about cybersecurity, if you think about privacy, you know, these are all areas that we think deeply care about. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that everything we bring to market is, is highest quality, meets the needs, is economically viable, and can scale to the broadest cross-section of the population. So value uh, for money, but also robust and secure Absolutely. at the same time. Lastly, what can Indian healthcare providers expect from J&J's digital capabilities in the next five years? Yeah, I mean, I will say um, as, as the leader for our enabling technology portfolio, I have the privilege of having access to all of the innovation and exciting things that we're working on. Uh, so from an Indian uh, you know, healthcare provider standpoint, um, I think they can expect continued uh, investment in, in innovation in our existing platforms. What we are building is, is a comprehensive platform that spans um, you know, capital systems like robotics, advanced navigation, um, that looks at software innovation as an enabler um, and of course, surrounding it with data, AI, um, and you know, smart power tools, artificial intelligence, even personalized planning solutions um, that allow us to impact the entire continuum of patient care. Um, and not just with respect to, to technology itself, we will also be looking to bring technology to different types of procedures within orthopedics. So if you think about large joints, such as hips and knees, um, shoulders, spine, trauma, these are all spaces that are um, ripe for digital innovation. I think that's a great and positive note to wrap that on. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing these valuable insights with us. Clearly, the intersection of digital innovation, robotics, and personalized care is not only reshaping patient outcomes, but also 
redefining what's possible in orthopedic surgery. Johnson & Johnson's commitment to pioneering these advanced technologies is setting new standards in healthcare, particularly in a dynamic market like India. We look forward to following J&J's continued innovations and their impact in transforming patient mobility and quality of life. Thank you once again, JR, for joining us here. It's been an extremely valuable conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.